So you can look at join as an operator, much like plus or mul multiplication or uh, minus, those kind of things. Uh, basically, you're taking an input table, you're putting it on the left, and then another table, you're putting it on the right, and then you put the join in the middle. So you have a left operand, a right operand, and join in the middle. And just like any other binary operator, you can uh, chain these as much as you want. You could say 5 plus 2 plus 8. You can also do multiple join connections um, at, to combine several tables together. So the Northwind database has uh, a little bit of an interesting setup. Let's uh, bring up the Objects Explorer again. Um, we have customers. Right here we have uh, products, uh, we also have orders, and we have order details. So so this gets a little bit complicated. If you think of an order, uh, probably layman way of thinking of it is if you go to, uh, say Walmart, go to a Walmart, throw a bunch of stuff in your cart, uh, you walk to the cashier, you buy everything, that's one order. But if you look at your receipt, it has, he bought you know, five boxes of Tide and and two boxes of this kind of cereal and this kind of thing. Those, those are all the details on your one order. So that's the difference between orders and order details. So orders tells you who ordered, who, who made that order, uh, what date the order was placed on, but then order details uh, tells you exactly what they purchased when they made that order. And then products again shows us the product. So, so literally customers are tied to orders, which is, are tied to order details, which are tied to products. And uh, we can certainly combine all that data to figure out who ordered what product. It's going to be a little hairy, but we can do it. <sighs> so, for one thing to think about with queries is they can get really complicated really fast. But if you just break it down and think of them as little pieces and you're kind of putting these Lego pieces together, then they're not nearly as intimidating. So let's start with the, uh, let's start with the customers. So select, splat oops from customers and I like to run that and look at the result and feel good yeah that looks right okay and then I'm um, customers if I notice I have customer ID and then let, let's, let's just look select splat from orders so let's look at the orders table now just its data and notice that each order has an ID which is nice a unique identifier for every row but then it also identifies the customer that made that particular order so I'm feeling good about that. So let's see if we can join these two tables together. So from customers, join our binary operator. Join that to orders. And we want to join them on uh, the customer ID. So I can say customers dot uh, customer ID equal orders dot, uh, not order ID, customer ID, because that's where they're going to match. And run that and incorrect syntax near the dot. Oh, forgive me, I forgot the on. We have to join on a join condition. So, so run that uh, invalid column name customer. Of course, I forgot to put ID on the end here. Okay, run it, and now we see that here's the customers. Alfred looks like Alfred has made six different orders. I can go over here to where the order table ended up. And it looks like Alfred made an order back in 1997. I told you this database was kind of old. Uh, 1998. Anyway, required date, ship date, all that information. All right. So, so there we go. So, notice the result of this this whole uh, join. The result is a another table. And since that's another table, I can join that uh, to yet another table. Let me. Uh, I remember syntactically how I used to write these. I think that's what I like to do. Okay. Join. Well, the next table over is, uh, let's see, we have customers joined to orders. And in order to figure out what customers ordered what products, we have to look at the details of every order. So so before we even do that, let's let's go down here and say select splat from, what is it, order details? Oh, notice there's a space. There's a space in the table name, so order details. There's a couple ways we can overcome that. One, by putting brackets. You can also put it in double quotes. Uh, put double quotes over here. Uh, your natural reaction would be, oh, it's a string. No, it's not a string. Uh, in, in fact, in order to do a string in SQL, we have to do a single tick, which is a little non-intuitive because single tick in programming languages means character. Anyway, we, we can put the double quotes or the brackets. The brackets are Microsoft-specific. 
In fact, Microsoft's uh, version of SQL is called Transact SQL or T-SQL, and the brackets are specific to Microsoft. If you want to be a little more portable, go with the uh, double parentheses just in case you decide to port your database over to Oracle or MySQL, something like that. Okay, let's look at the order details here. So highlight, run. Okay, we have order ID. Now again, let's look at let's look at the results of. I'm going to just take this join out for a minute. So we have this bottom query. The results are shown here. The top query. The results are shown on top. And um, for the order detail, think about this as a again as a Walmart receipt. We have the order ID or that what they had in their shopping cart that day, uh, and then or their shopping cart number that day, and then this is the product they had. They paid fourteen dollars per that product and they bought 12 of them. And this product, they, uh, it's product ID 42, uh, $9.80, they brought 10 of them, so on and so forth. So I need to match this big resulting table at the top, which is what we have right here. I need to join it to all the details here. Well, that's, that's hopefully hopefully intuitive. In fact, I'd even pause the video here if I were you and try doing it myself. But let's join um, order details. Oh, and of course, it's not going to cooperate. Come on. Um, on. Well, how is the orders table related to the order details table? Well, remember, each order has a unique ID. And then the order details, those individual items on each receipt, are mapped to that one order. So we can join them on uh, orders dot order ID equal to uh, order. Whoopsie, order details. Come on, order details dot. That's interesting syntax, isn't it? Dot after the quotes, but that's that's how it works. Um, order ID. So we can run that. Let me just highlight this top query just so we have the one query result. And notice we're just adding more columns in because we keep putting the tables off to the left of each other. So at first we have the customer information. Here's all the customer information. And then right here is the order information. And notice it duped because we have duplicate order details here to the right. So here's all the order detail information. Wow, this is getting pretty hairy. Um, but we have, remember the, the question we're trying to answer is who ordered what products? Well, in order to get the products, I have to go to the products table. Notice the order detail here has the individual products. So let's just, uh, in fact, this is how, I, again, I like to build these up little by little. So select splat from, let's look at what products has in it. And I could hit the plus sign over here and look at it, but I really like, just like to look at the data straight on to get a feel of what I'm doing here. So I have product ID. Let's run both these queries at the same time. So scrolling over to the right, Order details has a product ID, and uh, products has a product ID. So to match this big table to the products table, I have to tie them together on their product ID. So join. Um, oh, I don't need quotes because there's no space. Products on. Oh, this is getting this is getting big. Um, let's see. Uh, order details. Order details, oopsie, dot product ID equal to products, oopsie, products, come on, products dot product ID. Wow, that's a, that's a big table, that's a big table. I'm going to delete this down here and let's run this. Whew, look at all the columns we have. The result of joining uh, looks like one, one, two, three, four tables together, all those columns. Again, this data is hard to digest. There's just way too much information. And, and the question I'm trying to answer is who ordered what products. So really all I want to know is, is I could either ask the company name or contact name. Let's just go off contact name. And then all the way at the other end, all the way at the other end is uh, the product name. So product name. Run that. Boom. There we go. So it looks like Frederick ordered Alice Mutton, Renate, or Renate, I'm not even going to try these names before I slaughter them, ordered Alice Mutton. A lot of people like an Alice Mutton, look at that. And then we got Chai and Chang, 
And then uh, here, here's another question we could roll with. Did anyone order the same product twice? Um, a, a visual way we can answer that is just by dropping an order by down here. So let's order by contact name, and then let's do uh, product name. So run that. So it looks like Alejandro, Alejandra ordered this Nord Os, whatever it is. Please forgive me for my cultural ignorance. But it looks like Alejandra uh, really likes this product. Now again, if I if I don't care for the duplicates, I could simply throw distinct up here, and then that's going to remove uh, the duplicate rows where all the values match. It will. This is a duplicate of this. Is a duplicate of this, but it is not a duplicate of this, even though the name is the same, because the product name is different. So run that. There we go. So it looks like Alejandro Camino likes this, 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 and so on and so forth. Whew. That's a that's a big join. Joining multiple tables.